So after the last message I posted about how to handle criticism as an entrepreneur, I got a bunch of great replies back of people telling me how they handle criticism. Somebody said uh, they think of it as verbal gold, which I love. That's totally where I'm at with uh, with with the, the message that I'm trying to get across about criticism or uh, or feedback that you don't like. I think verbal gold captures it really well. Uh, somebody else wrote back and he said, you know, what do you think about the what happens between when you get criticism and sort of you come out the other side and you think, oh my gosh, this is actually an opportunity or this is actually verbal gold. Uh, and so that's something I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, expand upon and just kind of share how I think about that and, and what does happen in between that, that criticism and coming out the other side and saying, oh, actually, this is really helpful. Uh, ideally, you just sort of do it at the same time. Like you get, you get criticism, you get feedback, and you just start thinking, you know, how is this an opportunity? Or maybe you, maybe you really just see it. Um, that's the point where I am now, is I'm better at that. There's still times something comes in and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is like totally screwed up and this whole thing is off the rails. And it takes a while to get to the point where I then say, oh wait, actually that was really good in point and I just, I just didn't hear it at the time. But I'm getting better at just decreasing that, that recovery time, that, that processing time. Uh, I know there's people out there who are just, they're so in it that they hear criticism, they hear feedback, and they immediately think opportunity. So I'm somewhere in the middle. Uh, I think in, in the past, I, I certainly would have taken criticism and, and feedback or even just things that I interpreted as criticism that maybe weren't even intended. Uh, just you know, taking those things really hard and just saying like, okay, this, is, this isn't working. This whole strategy is, is totally off. So this is a very personal journey. It's a very emotional process. Criticism is probably most most of the time is it's not meant to hurt you. It's not meant to uh, to say somebody doesn't like everything that you're doing. It's probably a lot of times criticism comes in and people say, right? Don't you get criticism? And people say, oh, I mean this like in the best way. But still, at the back of my mind, I'm still like, yeah, but this really sucks, uh, <laughs> right? But like this really this really hurts and. Um, the reality is, in order to in order to change that, it's taken me a long time. I've been working on this for for years in order to just really continue to question my my gut reaction to something that feels like criticism or feels like pain, and instead turn it into how can this be an opportunity? How, like, what is the opportunity that's that's buried in this? It's really your mindset, your own mindset, that makes a difference. Whatever whatever's coming in. Whatever the intent was, maybe it was maybe it was to be critical. Maybe it was to uh, to hurt what you're doing, or somebody doesn't like actually does not like you, or doesn't like what you're doing. But what you can change is your own your own mindset. You can change how you how you see criticism as it comes in. And I think in in retrospect, looking back, what I can say is you know gold, this verbal gold, doesn't usually just fall in your lap. You actually have to be looking for it. You have to be seeking it. And so that's where I think you start to go to the kind of the other side of criticism where you start actually looking for uh, real feedback, real uh, critical, uh, somebody is not happy, somebody, something is not working for them. You start to actually seek things out. So rather than um, kind of coming from this background of maybe even avoiding criticism or just, I can't wait for it to not, you know, or, or just like tensing up, uh, actually going to the other side, we start to think about, actually, I, I want to kind of stir up criticism. I want to bring bring out more of this because ultimately it's, uh, it's where opportunity comes from. When you're really truly tuned into feedback and criticism, you're using that as your, as your navigation tool. You're using that as your compass. One thing that uh, I, I know I got this from my, my background in engineering is kind of a tendency to solve problems that don't really exist. And it, it sort of, it, it gets tied in, and this is kind of, I'm not sure exactly how to, how to explain this, but that tendency is, is kind of the counterpart to kind of avoiding criticism or, or being afraid of criticism, is this need to then fix it before the criticism happens. But if you're open to criticism, if you can engage uh, well with criticism, I think it actually flips to where I don't, I don't tend to solve problems anymore. I don't tend to be so, and I guess it's, you could say it's, I'm not proactive, but it's, it's different. I, I see it as a good thing. <laughs> um, but it's, I, I don't solve problems that don't exist. I really use the feedback from others and what I see in others 
as, as that compass and as a way to navigate rather than trying to predict it, which I, I think some of it can really come down to you're trying to anticipate it so that you don't get the criticism. But if you see criticism as, a, as the opportunity, the verbal gold that it is, then the whole strategy of how you build things, how you create things, how you imagine things starts to, sh to shift because it really bec becomes how do we start tapping into that criticism and feedback earlier in the process rather than building something that's like immune to criticism. That's not, that's not the point. And so you're, you're, my underlying strategy has, has shifted for that. So here's a note that's not about criticism from others, but it's about criticism for yourself. Stuff that really grabs your emotional attention. Uh, think about those moments where you scroll through LinkedIn or you scroll through Facebook and you get, it's kind of this strong reaction where I'm, I'm comparing myself to something somebody else is doing or I'm thinking about some opportunity that I missed out on. So one thing that I've started doing is I'll actually proactively open up LinkedIn and start scrolling through and see if there's anything that really grabs my attention. Uh, something that I'm like, oh my God, I wish I did that. And what I start to do is to then say, okay, then how do I, how do I get to that? Uh, and that's actually the story behind my, uh, my TEDx talk about carbon removal was I was scrolling through LinkedIn, somebody I knew had done a TEDx talk. And so I said, oh my God, I wish I could do that. And there's kind of a fork in the road because I, I, the way I used to process stuff like that would be I'd say, oh, I wish I could do that, like, but I can't because I suck or whatever, like whatever it is you say in your brain, right? But just starting to fork there and say, well, okay, well, how, how, do, I, how do I get there? Um, and so for me, that's how, the, that's how the TEDx San Francisco talk came about as I started talking to people that I knew who had done talks. Uh, I started watching a bunch of talks to think about, you know, how might, how might I make this work? And you know, six months later, I was on stage talking at TEDx San Francisco, right? So it's you start to build these these connections from this really strong emotional ah to actually how do you how do you channel that into getting that into being there into into whatever rather than you know uh, you know I, I feel exhausted you know, I feel tired I feel I feel drained by this. So I appreciate the opportunity to talk about this. I would love to hear from other people, where, where are you in your journey on this? Maybe you've got other ideas and tools like verbal gold, I love that one. If you've got other ways of, of thinking about or processing criticism and feedback, I'd love to hear it. On the other hand, if every time you open LinkedIn or Facebook, you're like, <laughs> well, I'd love to hear about that too and, and, and hear about kind of how you're thinking about changing um, if you're thinking about changing, maybe you think this whole thing is stupid and you have some criticism of this, of, of this idea of criticism being opportunity, bring it on. I'd, I'd love to hear it. Uh, this, this idea is it's sh changing, it's morphing, um, and it's, it's evolving as time goes on. So love to hear, love to hear your criticism and feedback and thoughts on, uh, on this message. And if you're on that journey, just know that it, it does get better. It gets to be your, your recovery time is faster. Your time to seeing the opportunity that it is just gets, that time gets shorter and shorter and shorter. Maybe it used to be on the order of years. Maybe something bad would happen. You get some feedback, some criticism, and it sends you careening off into interstellar space for years until you finally realize that it was just the boost you needed to head off in the direction of a, a new undiscovered planet that no one even knew was in there. But that criticism sent you off in that direction. Maybe it takes years, but I tell you, it can take days, minutes, or seconds if you really practice and you get really good at this. Uh, and there's no way to practice but painful experience. <laughs> there's, no, there's no way to practice but finding those things that really grab you. Again, that's why I open up LinkedIn. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm now seeking out uh, these kind of reactions that can, that can help to point my compass. So that's where I'm at on this. It's kind of a weird one, but I'd love to hear what people think.